Hello, hello. Welcome to FinSuite hello, Live Community Jim. Day. Welcome to Flow. Flow has been a really active and, and passionate member of all things FinSuite for a while now. And when, when we were working on Client First, Flow reached out about translated content, about creating extra content in the French language so that more people can come into the Webflow community and come and use client first. So I've known Flow for months now, maybe even a year or two. And it's it's really, really nice to have him here on Community Day. So Flow, welcome, hello. Thanks for the big introduction, Joe. So welcome, uh, so hello to everyone. I'm Flo from DigiDub and uh, yeah, I'm the French translator of clients first with some of my teammates, which I will introduce later, but I will talk about it later. And I met Flo in person at State of yeah. Flow in Florida. So <laughs> yeah. Flo wasn't going. And then a few days before the conference had a FOMO feeling, fear of missing out and just came. And it was awesome, met in person. And that's why I'm wearing the DigiDot <laughs> Look at the here. match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flo, he, he delivered this in person, in my hands physically. So of course I am, I'm wearing this shirt and I'm really, really happy to be speaking to you. Thanks, before we get you. too far into the story, before we start to learn more about flow, about translation, about client first, about all the great initiatives of DigiDop, let's say hello to the audience. Who do we have here live? Magdalena, what's up? How you doing? Zach Bujasia, hello, happy Thursday. Yes, so nice. Thai, hello, what's up, what's up? Arapad, hello, welcome. Shane O'Mac, what's up? Great to see you. Dale Jensen, let's bring up one more. And Penny, great. Thank you so much for being here. Really, really happy. And Flo, let's get into this. Tell us your story from where you see the beginning of your professional career until now. Tell us that story. Let's go. Can I share my screen quickly? To of course, it? go for it. Okay, perfect. So did you see the picture? Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. So Very dressed up for the web industry. <laughs> yeah, I, I prefer the merch now, but it's okay with the suits. So I take this picture because it's an important picture. It's Thomas and I. So I will, intro I will introduce uh, how DigiDop was born. So to go deeper inside the story, we, we will do a business school. And uh, at the end of our business school, to be, to be graduate, we need to do an internship. And to do this internship, it was a six-month internship. And uh, Thomas says to me, why do an internship? Let's start the business say, okay, let's start a business. And uh, so, you know, we start all the things like finding the ID, like uh, looking for how we're going to budget things, find clients and all of that. And during this process, we just discovered no code tools because, you know, we need a website, we need to find clients, we need all of that. And we were like, uh, what? We, we just finished the business degree, we are ready to go and we don't know anything about that. And these are so powerful tools. And we were like, okay, maybe our idea was good, but uh, it was not good, <laughs> but let's start a business with no code tools. And uh, we really see the power and how we can leverage a lot of company and help a lot in a quiet, easy way. So we decided to become a no code agency. And uh, hopefully at this time, we were coaching by someone uh, helping us uh, to just start our, our business. Because when we discover no code, we are like, okay, we are going to revolutionize uh, all the company. We're coming with like a, a stack of 20 or 30 tools and coming inside the company and rebuild everything. And uh, we find our first clients. We come and say, okay, you're ready for the revolution. 
And uh, he said, okay, uh, we are going to rebuild your sales process, your website process, your average process, all the CRM, all that kind of things with a lot of tools. It was so hard. <laughs> it was so hard. We, we decided to just be specialized and uh, our motor just say, you're, you're too large. You're, the scope is too large. So let's specialize. And uh, we choose Webflow. And so we start being really focused on burdening on Webflow. So we find two clients, three clients, just selling website and uh, learning Webflow in, this, in the meantime. And during this process, we just discovered that, okay, the code tools are not as easy as people say, but it's not accessible because it's just English content about no code tools. If you want to learn how to use it, you need to understand English. So during this process, we quickly decide to just document all our learning and every day we learn things. And when we learn, we just share for free with French community. And okay, today I'm looking for that. I'm struggling with that. When I find the solution, I made a quick documentation, share it with the French community in French language, because I think if we struggle with that today, maybe tomorrow it will be another people. So let's go. So that's how we start. And um, one time come, uh, so during this time, it's start building our SEO strategy. We are really focused on building with SEO and how to use this content. Um, you know, we, we were salesperson, Thomas and I, and uh, I really believe and feel that the content is really powerful because as salesperson, you always pitch in the same way. And uh, when I discover our content, I'm like, okay, I can do one pitch and it will work for me like uh, for long. <laughs> so let's create content. And uh, so it was the process. And uh, one time comes uh, what we can call the big, the big clients with the big needs, big uh, budget, but big needs. And uh, these clients, when uh, we made a call with him, he like, okay, I like your energy, but uh, are you sure you can handle it? I was like, yeah, yeah, for sure. I know it's possible in Webflow. I, I cannot do it for now, but I will. <laughs> I will learn to do. And uh, this client was really important for us because uh, it just pushed ourselves to just do more and really be clean on Webflow, building with all the best practice, building really clear. So it was uh, really a powerful client. It helped, it helped us a lot of just grow our skills and learn. And still have a particular relation with him today, but uh, we'll talk about it maybe later. And uh, after that, we are we hiring Thibaut. Thibaut is the first DigiDop member. At this time, we don't have any budget. So he, he's, in a natural way, he works from his home because we cannot just have some, uh, some office. And uh, Thibaut is really important for DigiDop because he's the first member of uh, the team. And he, he helps us a lot in growing, the, growing and building our value or culture and things like that. And so he works from his home and uh, it works well. Uh, so we decide to become a Webflow remote agency and uh, now we are seven and uh, here we are. That is a great story, really natural coming into the no code tools <laughs> and then transitioning to Webflow. And I know a lot of people have this similar type of story. I have a few questions for you. Number one, in France, I have heard that not a lot of people are into no code tools, that this is a fairly new thing. Yeah. And that there are a lot of businesses that are not, not ready to adopt it right away, right? They need a little bit of convincing. It's not like in the US where no code is exploding. Uh, it, there, there's just less adoption. So when you were doing this, going into no code, instead of going to the internship, was that difficult, a difficult decision to make to say, I'm going to go into this industry that's not really that popular. It's cool, but it's, you know, t tell us about that decision. Cause I'm sure it was tough. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't think for me, it was so tough because just when I watch people like, like you, like Finn Sweet, like people talking about no code, I was just like, oh, to have this kind of emotion when they talk. I think there's some things to do in <laughs> because, you know, it was so, there are an energy in it. And so I think like, uh, okay, we missed it in France. We don't have that. We just have PowerPoint and Excel and we're good at that, but let's do another thing. Uh, yeah. 
that's the way we go in. And then what made you go Webflow? Tell, tell us about the change between we do no code tools, we help you set up any kind mm. of platform to we focus on Webflow. Why was that change made? Mm. Exactly in the same exactly the same as I mentioned, like when we are going to release our first website for our first company, which uh, name is was resolution for the story, it was another business. We just start looking like Wix, WordPress and things like that. So I start going on YouTube and say, okay, let's do, let's, let's look what's the difference. And uh, so I look people talking about WordPress, look people talking about Wix. And when I see people talking about Webflow, I was like, oh, they're not talking the same way. So probably it's different. <laughs> and so we go there. <laughs> Totally. Webflow, well, we know this, Webflow can help you build a career. It's not yeah. just a utility tool, Yeah. right? Stripe is an amazing application, amazing company, but it's a utility tool. Mm. It's not, you, you don't really build your career as a Stripe expert. I mean, you could, but it's not like Webflow where there, there are mm. Webflow experts forming every day. So exactly, of course, that's, that's great. And, yeah, please. Yeah, because you make me think about that. And you know, when we are, when we launched that, and when with uh, Thomas, we see Webflow, we really see it as a platform from the beginning. And uh, we come from business school. So we don't have the vision of like take people who just love like, uh, you know, functionality and things like that. We really think from the beginning, so how we can add value and how we can use Webflow to develop the business of company and just change, change, change their, their life. You know, I, we, we really, we got quick wins at our start, which was really relevant. Like, uh, we work with an end worker. Uh, I don't know the word in English, but people work with the wood. He says to us, oh, I don't need a website or business is just, you know, people talking about me and that and that and that. And we say, okay, but let's do it for free. We're just making your SEO strategy in the local terms and building a a good Webflow website, and let's see. So one month later, it was first on all his position uh, in the local business, and he was like telling us, holy shit, I have too much clients. And he was really stressed. It was really stressed because too many clients, too many needs, too many calls, and we just changed his life for sure, and quite easily. Hell yeah, I love that. I mean, I, I feel a little bit little bit bad that he was stressed about it, but yeah. it's, it's better than being stressed about not having anybody <laughs> as a client. So great. Yeah. That, that's the power of an end result in Webflow. It could change somebody's life. Yeah. So huge. And then the last question I want to talk about is about the language. You said a very interesting comment that in order to be a true professional, to really understand the tool, you have to know English. Yeah. This is a huge barrier to entry to people yeah. who have English as a secondary language. So in the audience here, if you have English as a secondary language, you consider another language your primary. Come in the chat here, tell us your primary language. Uh, and let's see where people are coming from, what languages are being spoken in the audience. But this this must be the reason why you're so passionate about translating client first to French, because you want other people to really understand client first, even if they don't understand English. And right now with Webflow, with client first, with a lot of tools on the web, there is a barrier to entry with English as that barrier. So talk more about that passion of, of making these translations and helping bring people into this ecosystem. Yeah, exactly. As you mentioned, it's uh, in France, it's uh, still a small market and we are really like, we need to lead the market and to lead the market, we need to educate people. So how can they use these tools and how they can use this tool in their daily life? And, you know, a lot of, uh, lot of questions we got from clients or, or just from people who want to go in, it's like, okay, but how can I do that? How I can do that? How I can do that? The content exactly. The, the, the answer is on the web. They can find the answer, but it's in English. So they don't really have the answer. And so we were like, you can have this answer if we just made the content in French. 
it's in this way, like if I can introduce like uh, how we build our YouTube channel, how was the start of your YouTube channel? Like we, st we start having clients, okay? And when we have clients, we don't think about, okay, the editor mode is in English. And so for us, it was like, okay, the editor mode is, is so easy. But for people who don't talk anything about English, don't understand anything about English, it was like, oh, it's really struggling with that. And we're starting like, okay, they always ask us the same question and we always take the call and answer them to the same question. And we were like, okay, let's do a playlist video on YouTube. And each time a new client will ask us this question, we just send him the YouTube playlist. He will have the answer. And also a lot of people will have the answer. And this is really the way we build our YouTube channel. And if you go there and look at the first video, we are like just really, it's a cheap quality video, but it's just answer from our clients, just clients asking us like, how do that, how do that? And we answer them with a video. It's help us support our life because we were like, okay, we're going to have too many questions about that. And it also built our SEO strategy, content strategy. And, and now we are in the game of community and just helping and uh, keep growing. And it's so cool. We, we wake up and in a Slack channel, we have just a, a message from community. Thanks for making that. You helped me a lot. And we're like, okay, so cool. So, so cool. Love that. That's a, such a great way to get started with content. You're helping your yeah. clients. These are real questions that people have, which means that there are also questions that other people will have, right? If, if five people are asking a question, that means there's five other people out there that have the same exact question. So it's, that's a very natural way to get going and you don't exactly. need the high production value. You don't need mm. it to be perfect. You just need the information to be there for someone to consume. Mm. We have a very interesting conversation in the channel here. And first, before we get into any specifics, mm. let's bring up some of the languages that are here today with us. Uh, primary languages, we have Johnny, Spanish. Hey, hey, Johnny. Awesome. Great, Carmina, Africans, South Africa, awesome. Vianney, French, awesome, love it. Pablo, Spanish, nice. Nicolas, Belgium. We have Cosmin, Romanian, and Content Nest, Lithuanian, amazing. So, yeah. You have to you have to know English. Now let's bring up another set of questions. Uh, let's see. Johnny has some interesting comments here. HTML and CSS are both written in English. Mm. Style, height, min width, background color, media query, mm. of course. So by default, one needs to understand English in order to naturalize mm. this this in writing and designing it. Of course. So you have to learn some key phrases. Yeah. In addition to that, I don't think there's enough information that explain what these things do. So it's okay to learn, you know, if you speak a different language, learning the 20 mm -hmm. CSS properties, you know, it can be done. But to understand the logic behind why you would use height, why you would use min width, what media query actually does, that explanation is also not translated. So it's double. We're not the HTML and CSS is in English. And then the training around it is usually also in English. So Flo, you are trying to bring that education of these topics to the French language and specifically exactly. for Webflow and client first. Yeah. And you know, HTML and CSS is really important in Webflow, but, uh, Two years ago, I don't know anything about HTML and CSS. I don't have any ID. And I think Webflow, like, uh, it's funny because it was a, a conversation we have with Johnny uh, at State of Flow. It's like gaming, you know? And so when you are going on, side, on your Webflow and you will start playing and change color and things like that, after maybe six months, one year, depends, it will be a natural way. Like uh, you see style, height, mean with background color, things like that would be natural. and. You, if you just don't, uh, you know, app, I don't know the word in English, but don't be afraid to go on this kind of road. Uh, it will be natural in uh, some months. Absolutely. Challenging, but possible. Keep working hard at it. Let's bring up a great comment here from Shane O'Mac 151. 
Does Flow have any tips for getting people to see the value without offering it for free? I like that strategy of giving things away for free, giving value, but I can't do it forever. So Flo, what kind of advice do you have as somebody who is giving this content for free, pushing the boundaries without asking for anything specific in return? What, what's your thought on this? I think you need to be, I think you really need to, if you want to do that, to do create value with content and things like that, you need to do, you need to do it in a natural way, you know? So for us, it's really natural in DigiDub just because as a company, we see our business growing and uh, we are like, okay, now we are seven at the team and each time a new member comes, you need to learn Webflow and all the resources we got, you can just learn Webflow with all resources. So we can see value also inside our team members, like uh, they, they will grow, the skill will grow. So it's a really w good way to also, you know, when you are in a company, it's complicated to just know who know what. And uh, at DigiDub, it's when someone learns some things, you just need to share in the Slack channel by a content. So you need to share it by an article, you need to share it by video, by a podcast, but you just don't just share the information on the Slack and it's lost on the Slack and uh, nobody can prof have value on it. And so after that, it's natural and uh, you will be in the game. <laughs> you will be in the game of creating wow. content. And, uh... That's great. I was not expecting that answer. I, I was expecting a different answer. So using content as team building that that yeah. that's such a natural way to do it it's a documentation yeah of growing your team skills that's amazing so that's shane amazing. omak just that that right there it, that's that's golden that's enough value for you to do it for your company as an individual maybe it's a little bit different but when you're sharing internally with a team yeah that's that's a really interesting answer. And also as an individual, I think, and I always say that to my team, it's a really good exercise to grow because when you create content, you need to clear your mind, to structure your ID, to, and it really helps you to just become better. And each time with my, with my team, we just look in content like we do like one month, one month ago or two months ago, we we're like, oh, these shits are not, it's not, it was not a good content and it's good because it's a process. So it means like yeah. everyone growing, everyone developing a skill, everyone's going to be better at writing, at copywriting, at creating visual. So it's so good. You can see your progression also as an individual, you can see your progression and it, 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 it permits you to structure your mind and uh, really understand all the process, all the process. Yeah, amazing. Teaching is the best way to learn. That's- 100%, 100%. Is, it is. I, I, will introduce, I will introduce that like Thibaut, you know, he, he joined us as a SEO strategy. So when Thibaut to remember, is, is the first people who come in DigiDub, he come just for create content about SEO strategy. And after three or four months, he say, okay, I want to learn Webflow. And we say, okay, okay, let, let's do it. Let's learn Webflow. So I start teaching him Webflow. And uh, during this process, I just learned so much, just learned so much to teaching him to go back from the basic and uh, know it's probably better than me. And uh, we just hired Anna a few few days ago and she was the next nurse. So she's, she's, in a, she's in a retrain, professional retraining. I don't know how we can tell that. And now it's uh, Thibaut's turn. Thibaut is his mentor and he's now teaching to Hannah. So I think it's just so beautiful, you know, like uh, I teaching him six months ago, Webflow. Now it's his turn to teaching Webflow and to learn. Good process. That's great. That's a, it's a big win there. Uh, let's, mm -hmm. let's bring up some Johnny comments. Johnny is on fire today with these great relatable <laughs> comments. So this is how I thought you were going to answer. Johnny says, I'm not entirely sure, but there are many people in the Webflow community that have side activities that bring clients naturally because of those things. So this is in reference to side activities of content that you're mm -hmm. doing this initiative, this content, this, and then it doing that is more advertising, more people know you, and it brings you more clients. And then Johnny says, 
uh, again, the same way some community members get leads via clonables, Digidop can, treat, can teach and then attract leads. This is how I thought you would answer. And I think this is how okay. a lot of people answer, that you do the content so that leads find you, that it grows the revenue side of the business. And that's hmm. why you can do content for free. And that's a strategy. Yeah. But, you know, you, you didn't answer like that. You answered in a way of education, of team building, mm -hmm. of internal growth. So tell me about the lead side of it. Do you also yeah. have some attraction to that? Exactly. It's, uh, so why it's not all problematic today? To, because just because we have so many leads, we cannot afford the production. We are still a small team. We are really focusing on high quality, just uh, we call that the digi qualidad. So we are already focused on being close with our clients. We're building the digidop experience. So it's really important to, to do that. So it just takes not that much project each month. And uh, in France, we are really well ranked on strategic position as en français, ça serait agence Webflow, but in English is Webflow agency. And we have many leads who come from this kind of request, request on Google. And or really, the real problem we got is we need to have more people who want to join our company, learn Figma, learn Webflow, learn Client First, learn SEO, become the DigiDop experience. And we can, after all, produce more and uh, making more money. But not our problem at the time is not leads, it's just production with or, with or Digi Qualidad. Totally. That's, that's the best way to think about it. If you go in, and your primary goal is to get leads, you may be disappointed because that doesn't happen right away. You don't put out content and then a few weeks later you get a lead from that. Mm. You can put out content and educate people within a few weeks, but you may not be able to get any leads. And that's why a lot of people stop content. They start content, they think leads are going to come in, they don't come in for a few months and they say, I'm wasting my time with this content. They just didn't give it enough time. Uh, but you, you get the, the instant benefit because your goal is the education, which happens instantly. Someone watches the content and now they know whatever you're teaching them. Valuable. Love it. Okay. We have a good testimonial. Uh, I, this is such a difficult name for me to say, uh, which one? Your your team member, I don't want to I pronounce have, it incorrectly. I have I have Thibaut Le Grand, <laughs> Quentin Balero. Which one? Thibaut. 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 Uh, Thibaut, so, yeah, Thibaut. says Thibaut says it was a a long way to develop a good Webflow project, but I had a very good teacher. <laughs> yes. Thanks, so that's a great so, testimonial. Mm. But he he, he nice. learned really quick. He he learned really yeah. quick. I've learned Webflow, it, take, it takes me, and I always say that it, it's because it's really important. Content is important and sharing is important. To, to learn Webflow, it took me like one year and a half. To, to Thibaut, just being at the same level as me, like five months maybe, five months, yes. Just because I have too much to share with him, he learns so quickly because you have access to the good resource at the good time. And me to access to this kind of content, I need to go on blog, I need to go on forum, I need to go on YouTube, I need to, to, to find the right content in English, understanding it in English, things like that. What made you, what made you get to the point where you, you felt like you knew Webflow? You said it, it took you a year and a half about to, to be able to teach and to do mm. a good job and understand what you're doing. And then you educated and now it takes the people you educated months. So was there a specific, uh, a tool, a resource, a strategy, some kind of learning path that you took that helped you in that year and a half to get you to that, that teaching level? Fin sweet. <laughs> fin sweet made my day. Fin sweet made wow. my day for sure. For sure. Great. The, you know, I, I don't follow that much. Uh, I, I, I don't need to follow that much uh, channel. So for sure, I start with the Webflow University. And uh, after FinSuite, uh, I just love your, the content you made and uh, just follow that and focus on that. Wow. Okay. Amazing. I love that. That's why, okay, so that's we... why it's really good to be there today. Yeah. So, with okay, you so and the we saved you like a year, maybe. 
we we saved you a year of extra learning <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> Let's let's bring up this comment from Johnny. This is another great one. Webflow, however, does exactly that, I believe, in reference to teaching you web yeah. in a different language. Well, Webflow so democrat democratizes by removing the language barrier and making those attributes with visual UI. That can be command Z, if anything. So this is saying uh, a little bit out of context, we were talking about this before, that there's not a lot of education out there in different languages, but HTML and CSS is in English. But now Webflow comes along and lets you do these things and visually figure it out without any words or language barrier. Very true. However, I think that there is more needed in a different language to really understand what you're doing. So I think that Webflow takes a big, big part of this language barrier out. And I think it, it's really making people that have English as a second language adopt the web like they would never be able to do otherwise. But you get to a point in Webflow where you need to have a little bit more education, a little bit more training, that your, your trial and error trying to make things look good and trying to make a good website look and function well has a limit and you have to get to that next level of education to organize your project, to scale your project, to build a, a, like a really solid project. And that you can't just learn in designer gets you part of the way there, but not all the way there. Mm -hmm. So just, uh, I just, I wanted to comment on that. Johnny, I love this comment. I agree. And I think somebody like Flo is helping people from France take that to the next level and really understand what's happening inside of Webflow. What's happening, why classes can be organized in certain ways, why things can be laid out in certain ways. Exactly. Uh, usually it's uh, when I talk with a designer, designer really see Webflow as a platform to just make UI. But in DigiDop, we really think Webflow, and I think it's also their strategy, we think about Webflow as a platform, as a core cultural business, being at the core of the strategy of the business. So we're not building Webflow for the UI. We're really building Webflow as a platform. So it means a big CMS. You need to really be organized how you build your CMS, how you build your class, because your site will scale. Because if you have, like we say, if you have a, di a good digi digital website, your business will grow because you will be you you will have more business. And if you will have more business, your, your website will grow. So you need to be ready for that. And uh, so we are really focused on building on good foundation. Good foundation. You got to build on top of a good foundation. Uh, and that transitions really nice into a question from Yue Yin asks, how did you manage your very first clients when you were still in a learning phase? <laughs> did you already use client first or FinSuite tips? Oh, so yeah. like, let's, let's think about before you really started understanding how things work before FinSuite content. Yeah. Tell us about that. How did you do that? You know, uh, I have, a, I have a, a sentence which is still in my mind. Like one day I was my, with my clients, he needed the functionality on the, his website. I, I don't know how to do that. Really, I, I was struggling. I already don't know. And he said to me, Flo, no, you need to assume. Like uh, you seen the contract, now you need to assume. And I was like, okay. Uh, I need to assume. So I just go back and uh, do the process I do every every time. So I test, test things, test and learn, go inside FinSuite Hack. FinSuite Hack help, helps me a lot at this time, go and support. What's really great also with the Webflow community, you can just go on a Slack channel, send your request and you can have a, an answer, you know? So, and I just find all the answer, start building. And the next day I send him the link Look the functionality, and uh, since the, since this day, you know you can believe me, and uh, the relation change. Learning while doing, learning on the job. Yeah. You know, I feel you, you can, maybe this yeah. is everybody. I feel like yeah. every single person we have on Community Day is talking about this exact thing. Like, I have the job, I have the task, I don't know exactly how to do it, but I know it's possible, and I'll learn yeah. while I'm doing it. And it's still important for us, like when we have a client asking something, we just check and if it's okay, we can do that, but we still don't know how to do that. It's really important for us to just take the, take the deal. 
because it will permit the team to know more and to grow and to have new skills. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite frequent to we sign clients and we know in this section, we, do, we still don't know how we're going to build this functionality or things like that, but we know at the, as a team, we are going to, to build it. It's the best attitude. It's the best attitude. I, I just had a flashback to the biggest project I ever got, HelloSign, starting ThinSuite. And it was a big CMS job. And I had never used CMS before. Webflow just released their CMS functionality. I had never used it because all my projects were really small and just there was no need for a CMS. And then I got HelloSign and I said, yeah, I'll do CMS. And I had never, literally never worked with Webflow CMS, but Webflow was such a great tool and so intuitive in every other part that I just had this confidence that I could do CMS, no problem. Like, th there would just be no problem because I'll, I'll figure it out. And it was exactly that. I just, I learned it as I was doing. It was a few extra hours <laughs> of trial and error and figuring it out. And then at the end of that project, I was a CMS pro. Like I knew everything about CMS because it was such a big project for CMS. So it's really dangerous to, to agree to something and you don't know if it's possible, yeah. but if you know it's possible and you, you really can visualize yourself getting it done, you can take that leap of faith and just figure it out on the job. Mm. Do you have any good stories about that? Is there anything you can share to, to maybe help people who are in this type of position? I have so many, so I cannot just tell one, but I have so many. Uh, I think it's really part of your workflow journey and just enjoy it. Enjoy the process. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to t take this pressure and a, as a positive way. Where when I work, when I know I have this kind of problem, which is really not a problem, it's just a, a, ch a new challenge. Uh, I just know I'm good at solve it in the morning when my, when my mind is clear and I take in in the morning. When everything is calm, my mind is clear and I go there and I try, try, try. And a lot of time I find a solution. And if I don't find the solution, no, I'm, I'm lucky because I have Thibaut. Soon I will have Anna. And I just, it's frequent that just, I call Thibaut. I say, look, I'm struggling with that. And he said, did you think about that? And I'm like, oh, fuck, thanks. And we just don't think in the same way at the same problem solving solution and just have the clear vision of another on the, uh, Another one can help you a lot. Totally, totally, totally. And that works, of course, with a team. And if, with, if you're a freelancer, you can do this same thing with a friend. Yeah. Right? Imagine just two freelancers. There could be two freelancers in the chat right now that just become friends. And they ask each other questions. And they say, hey, what do you think about this? Or, hey, I had some trouble with this. Can you give me 10 minutes to check it out? And it's this mutual relationship of helping people. This can work in any kind of situation. So this was a big thing that got you through and helped you through that initial learning curve, you know, just communicating with people and, and getting a different perspective on something. Yeah. And you say I mentioned Thibaut, but uh, I can also mention a lot of people on our team. They don't have the main, uh, a huge knowledge on Webflow, but they have a way to think and, uh, it can help you just asking them and uh, can help you a lot. Let's bring up a comment from Vianney. How do Digidop's French customers feel about the editor mode in English? They got our playlist on YouTube, so it's okay. <laughs> that's, right. really, that's, yeah. really, that's really the way we manage it. So we say to them, look, you have a playlist. The place is based on our first client's question. So, but, but if you still have a question, ask us and we answer with a YouTube video and it will provide you the answer for you and for all the Webflow community. Pro prob probably all the agency in France use our playlist. It's possible. I uh, just this, uh, this one in mind now, probably. So you're constantly growing this YouTube library of tutorials for your clients. So how do you do that for anybody that wants to follow, follow you doing that? Is this a loom video? Are you recording in like a, yeah. like a quick time MP4? What, what do you do? 
Yeah, we, we use Loom. Loom is very, is very powerful tool. I just recommend to everyone who don't use Loom, Loom is so good. So good, not, not just for recording, but also for just sharing your issue. Like maybe Thibaut doesn't, doesn't have to, he's still not working. I, need, I have a question for him. I made a quick record on Loom, send him on Slack, and he answer me when he wants. But uh, Loom is really good. But yeah, to, to go back to, uh, to YouTube, we record with uh, YouTube, and after we go on iMovie, and on iMovie, we made some cut to just make the video dynamics because uh, we are really focused on making court format, quick format, like you got a question, you got your answer. This is our strategy. So the main goal is you don't waste your time. So we made the cut to have uh, your a clear answer and we publish. J just don't be afraid to, to click on publish, you know, <laughs> and uh, let's go. Excellent. Short, short and sweet. So we, we have shared the DigiDop YouTube channel in the comments here. So go check that out. This is something. Uh, so let me ask, if somebody else is a, a French language speaker, can they share your videos with their client? Or do you not want yeah. that to happen? Yeah, okay. for sure. For sure. So there oh, you go. Oh, if, God, if you yeah. are... Yeah, oh, it's, really it's to, to, to spread yeah. the, the the knowledge and the, of course, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. So I recommend check out those videos and either use them to send to your clients or figure out how you can integrate this into your business. You know, how can I provide my clients with education um, and use DigiDop as, as this, <clears throat> this model for helping people understand? Uh, and let's bring up a comment from Mu Lea. DigiDops tutorials are the best. <laughs> Great testimony. Thanks, Lea. Lea, Lea, Lea helps us a lot to build our YouTube channel because she's asking us questions. <laughs> and we just say, okay, let's get your answer on YouTube. And this is the way. Nice. The way. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so audience, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please leave them in the chat. If you're finding value in this video, give it a thumbs up. It'll really help us. Now, normally yeah. in Community Day, we have we have this structure that we go through, and we completely did not follow the structure <laughs> at all today. I think we just got a little bit too deep into like Webflow talk, education talk, client first, this kind of this kind of stuff. So we didn't follow any of the the notes. Uh, and yeah. we, we have a high watch count. We have a good active watch count of people in here. So we're just rocking and rolling with this, this type of content. So audience comments, if there's a good comment, we're going to answer that comment. Uh, but for now, yeah. Flo, where would you like to take this? Like we have, we have 15 mm. minutes left. What, is there anything specific in the, the original notes that you want to talk about? Yeah, I think I think we can go. Uh, we still can go on teaching Webflow and things like that, and make the focus on two things. So, so first, it's the DigiDop Academy. We just released our first DigiDop Academy. Uh, so our first courses, and it was a question like, uh, did we need to make this content for free, or did we need to make this content payable? Because we made a, a huge courses on Figma for now. You can go on the link. Uh, it's uh, almost four hours. We more than four hours record. And uh, when we when we send the link for beta testers, are like everyone was ready to pay for that. And uh, some people say if you made that free, people will think it's not high quality uh, content. It's just a free content. And we're like, like oh, we work <laughs> we work two two months for that, and uh, people will think like it's not quality content. So we were struggling about that. And after that, we say. Let's do it for free. It's not. It's not our business. Uh, selling. Uh, I, I. I have asking Joe. What's your opinion on that? But uh, finally, we just take the decision to make it for free, and uh, we just have so many love and so many share after that. So many message of why are you doing that, guys? It's it's too much. <laughs> like it's too much doing that free. And we are like, let's let's go jump inside Figma. Let's go jump inside Webflow, and uh, you will learn. And maybe if you want to join the DigiDop as a DigiDopper soon, join our team. Let's go learn learn for free, and if you love it, we can teach you more at DigiDop. And it's permit me also to, to talk about another thing. You know, our first big clients, which I mentioned, like uh, we have a particular relation with him today. 
Um, when I, sh when I, uh, Last time we made a call and uh, I sh he just said, okay, where you are, DigiDop, what's your strategy? And we explained him, okay, let's DigiDop Academy and things like that. And he was calling us for, have, for hiring a consultant, a DigiDop consultant in his company initially, because uh, we're still working with him like summers per month, but uh, it's, there, it's need grow and he need a full-time DigiDop in his team because he want to build free website, but a, a, a big media and things like that. And when he saw, all that, that kind of thing, he say, okay, uh, I think you can hire for me someone, teaching him Webflow, he's become a digidopper and he can come in my company after. So it was like, uh, okay. So initially I think an agency will think like, okay, I hire people, I teach him and I make fee like a consultant company, you know, uh, putting him a, a consultant in his team. And we were like, okay, let's do that. So he say, I paying some fees for you just to teaching him Webflow and after, is a DigiDop uh, Digi member in my team for, for all the time. So again, back to creating this content, building this content for your team growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we shared the Academy link in the chat here. Check that out. I'm, I'm just going to share it again because we're getting a bunch of comments here. So I'm, re oh, no. I, I'm sharing it again. Please go and check that out. This is this is something you're telling me. You can now grow your team faster with this, even if nobody else uses it. Right? Imagine zero people in the world yeah. use it. It is just to to grow your team with to five you know five more people who are really mm -hmm. qualified and follow mm -hmm. your your way of thinking. Super valuable, uh, right? Yeah, because you know, as a service agency. Today, DigiDop is DigiDop thanks to our team, thanks to the skill of our team, thanks to the work of our team. So yeah. it's 100 percent that. So if we want the, Digi the DigiDop still growing, we still to need to teach and uh, learn with all our, our teammates. So it's really how we perceive our value. It's uh, with in our team and there's the skills of our team. So yeah. And I see a comment about Wiz, and it permits me to just make a quick thinking about it. We talk about DigiDop, how we grow, how we succeed. So it's important, like uh, we do a lot of things that works, okay, for the last two years, for one year and a half. But uh, maybe tomorrow, the market moves so fast, maybe tomorrow this kind of things doesn't work anymore. So we just need to be aware to keep your eyes open and be aware to maybe new tools coming. Maybe the market will take a new move. And so, of course, we have, uh, we are, we are, we are checking clearly with because we see the value inside web app, inside all the kind of thing. And we are really focused on just a uh, challenge or model. And uh, this is exactly what we ask to people who come in DigiDop. Like uh, we just have Quentin, Pierre and Anna who come in DigiDop and we say to them, okay, the model have working, have worked, but uh, let's challenge it now. And uh, if you see new value and new tools, uh, I just think about uh, Quentin, which is say, did you know these tools? And we are like, no, we don't go deep. You say, mm, you should, because uh, mm, it's good. So just uh, keep your eyes open and uh, don't think you're all victory. We're still uh, growing your business uh, all the time. Totally. That's, you always have to be ready for the change. Doesn't matter yeah. what the change is in any part of the business there. You always have to be ready to make a change fast. We have some really good comments in the audience here. I want to bring a few of them up. Uh, Liam, we kind of answered your, your question. Flo, you said you're interested in WISD. Uh, are you, are you have any plans of maybe translating content there into French? Probably. No plans it would yet. Be, it would, Probably. No, not, okay. No, no, no <laughs> plan yet because I just not, no go deep inside WISD and our process is really when we are going inside WISD and sure. for sure we are going to go, we just. Sure document all the process and uh, this is how it works and uh, for sure if we go inside with you will have content in french love it great uh we're, we're going to bring up one from you and then we're going to bring up pablo's comment so first you you says i disagree and this is in reference to maybe people look at free content and they think it's low quality right anything that's free there's this this idea of well if it's free that means it's not good enough to be paid 
Some people have that, that feeling, right? The free content, it's a really weird model. You catch a lot more people because there are people that are not willing to pay for things when they first start. But then you may miss some people that have this type of mindset that this is low quality, that I, I'd rather pay $100 for a course than get a course for free. So you disagree with that kind of mindset that it says that your yeah. resources are high quality and that <laughs> that yeah. it's still free, right? And and I could say that for FinSuite too. We have a lot of high quality resources, but they are free. So can you talk a little bit about that decision of why going free versus paid versus this perception? All yeah, of sure, this type sure, of thing? sure. Sure. So first, we just check about data. And when we check about data, you can see that people who pay formation will be more focused inside their formation because they are paid for. So we were like, OK, our goal is to people be focused because they, want, they need to learn, they need to grow. So maybe if they are paid, they will be more focused. OK, you, you understand that. And after, we were like, OK, since the beginning of DigiDub, and it was a big deal with Thomas, at the, at the beginning of DigiDub, we want to do a lot of things, a lot of things. Uh, we just discovered Docker tools, and we were like, uh, no, no, a lot of discussion about that. And so now we are like, OK, what's our business? Our business is we are a Webflow agency or B2B, or customer are B2B. And if we st start making this content not free, so payable, so we're going to have B2C clients with clients' needs. So clients means support, means create a Slack channel, means exchange with them, with maybe struggling with people who don't like what we made, what we work with. And we are like, okay, so since the beginning, we are focused on just become the best Webflow agency in France. So let's, uh, let's go on that, still going on our core business, still uh, sharing a lot. And uh, also, yeah, also just we say, Maybe we can catch new people. I thinking about a discussion I have with Thibaut. He said, yeah, my, my sister just won't change his, uh, his job. And, uh, you know, I really think that we can, we have a role, you, FinSuite, us as DigiDub, all the, all the, the company who works inside the way we work, inside the remote company, full remote company, asynchronous company. I can work from everywhere when it, I can work from everywhere, whenever, and uh, it's just so powerful for a lot of people. And we need to ch to share it to just people can see the value, you know, and uh, maybe want to go in. That's it's a great way to explain it. That it, you know, it brings people to your company. It goes right into yeah. Pablo Cortez's comment here. Free content is great for positioning. It's kind of like a second portfolio. So if you're offering something free, you have to make it high quality or it could work against you. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's, it's totally true. Uh, FinSuite, <laughs> we haven't really done a lot of advertisement on our portfolio projects and what we do for our agency. We'd spend most of our resources advertising our products, our tools, our content, our education, and because of that, people see FinSuite as high quality, not because of yeah. our high quality agency projects. So this is so true. Uh, your free content is a representation of your brand. And if, if you're given awesome free content away, people look at your brand and say, wow, this is a valuable brand because they're giving mm -hmm. a valuable information away for no money. Yeah. And exactly, and maybe the Figma course we made, we really, we really explain our process as agency. So how we design, how, how we start with the design thinking, the, the business, the, the business things. So yeah, people can just say, okay, these guys knows what they do, and uh, maybe I can go. Let's bring up a comment here from Pablo Gublin. Pablo asks. I would like to start teaching Webflow in my language. What would you recommend to start with? <laughs> good question. Very good question. Where we'll start? Uh, it's actually also the question we are asking ourselves because uh, we are going to release soon, I hope, our first Webflow formation. And the way I actually teach Webflow 
is I start immediately in the designer and I start to explaining HTML and CSS in a really easy way, but just to understand the difference between an element and a CSS class. When people got that, I start explaining, okay, no, we got that. No, start to structure the CMS. And I go inside the CMS because we really think Webflow will be used and will find this value as a platform. So we explain how the data is sent from the back to the front. And when people understand the, the move between the back and the front, we are like, okay, now let's build the front. And the front is just like the gaming part. And we are really just focused on, okay, no, you know, element, you know, CSS, play with it, but play with it in a careful way. And we start making some connection from the back to the front. And, this and they know HTML, they know CSS, they know data, how the data come from the back to the front, and they know how to play with the front. So it's a, a beginning. But with this kind of beginning, you can just build a landing page, which is scalable if it's a CMS landing page, and you can uh, run a lot of tests. Nice. So starting with the basics, really breaking yeah. down the basics. Uh, and would you recommend this with video? I recommend to mix. So actually what we do internally at DigiDub, so Thibaut is actually training Anna full time. So what we do actually, it's uh, Anna comes, uh, sometimes, the, sometimes she look at us building. Sometimes we explain, the, we explain to Anna with some videos, some tutorials and things like that. Sometimes she build and we come and we made the correction and say, okay, this is good. Yeah, but you also need to do in Webflow because what's really important in Webflow is when you see how people build in Webflow naturally, you see how they think. And when you see how they think, you see, okay, if she built like that, his mind is building like that, and uh, you can adjust the way you are going to teach later. That's why it's also sometimes uh, tricky. But Karen First is really good for that because <laughs> It's a method. <laughs> they are not like thinking about making that or that. It's, it's so structured, it's a foundation and you follow the foundation, you follow the documentation and you know it. And this is how also we manage with Anna. She's just starting, we are like, okay, we are going to read his client first in French. So you are the white person to just read all the doc and say to us if uh, the doc is clear. Perfect, perfect transition. <laughs> the French translation will be released November 4th, not this Friday, but the next Friday. So we have this next Friday, November 4th, a lot of FinSuite announcements. We're releasing a lot of things, a lot of big, really, really cool things. And one of those things is the first translated language of client first. So if you missed the beginning of the episode, Flo came to us and said, I want to make a French translation of client first. Very interesting. So we thought about it. And then we put out the request on Twitter for other people to translate in other languages. And now we have, I think it's 13 languages or 12 languages that are in action right now being built in client first. And mm -hmm. since flow is the first one, it's already done. And that is going to be released in the client first docs. We came up with a really cool way to do translation for all 13 languages in one Webflow project, all using the CMS. So that's that's coming November 4th, and that's going to be something that you can give to Anna, or you probably already have, but give to any yeah. of your, your people and say, hey, I taught you the HTML, I taught you the, CM the CSS, how the back works with the front, and now here's client first. So you understand these core principles, and now here's the structure that we like to use at Digidop, and it's all in French. Enjoy. Yeah. So that's so, cool. Yeah. I'm I'm Just, so excited for that. We are too, and which is really important. It's it's a really a teamwork. We I, I don't really I don't do a client first uh, just by myself. Thibaut, Thibaut is really part of it, and uh, Anna also because she made the the last you know the last uh, reading. Uh, because with Thibaut we are like okay, no us we know client first. So when we read it for us it's clear. But you, you just jump inside Webflow. You are 
the next nurse is two months ago you still you 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 made another work you come from another world so just with the doc and uh, what do you understand of it and uh, so she gave us good input and uh, Thibaut will take the time to make this adjustment in the doc with the last feedback and uh, to have a really good version good traduction accessible and uh, yeah and just to know uh, it's it's imp it's uh, obligatory it's mandatory for us to at digidub to develop with client first so a lot of people just say to us okay uh, i i can i i know how to develop in webflow i can join your company if they don't know client first for they're, they're not ready like uh, we need to train them and uh, it's really important to know that i think uh, it will be mandatory for like all the developer which is freelance developer or things like that so nice to hear this flow. It's really been an honor speaking to you and hearing about all of your initiatives. I think there's a very bright future for you, for DigiDop, for everybody involved and for the French community, right? This, I think they're the biggest winners here. That th This is going to be a big win for a lot of people. And I will say potentially life-changing. So we're at the hour. We have maybe one more minute uh, just to to recognize some of these great comments, we have a lot of people in a lot of big support for you right now. Dale Jensen, what a great Thanks. initiative. Antone, huge congrats to DigiDot for what they achieved in two years. Cheers, cheers to the team. Great work. Uh, we have a little bit higher up. Uh, Content Nest, what an inspiring story. I have to agree with all of this. Uh, it's It's very inspiring. I think you will inspire other people to to bring more language translation to this industry. And I'm, I am excited to watch you. I will be watching you and seeing what comes of all of this. Thanks. Thanks for all. Thanks for all the, the comment and thanks for the invitation, Joe. It's obviously the pleasure is sure. And uh, I'm also proud to be there here today. Amazing. So tomorrow we are live with Alex Iglesias to talk about CSS animations. Interesting, very cool topic. And then next week, come to us November 4th, where we are launching the Client First French Translated Docs, as well as a whole list of other really amazing announcements from FinSuite. That's the end of this episode. Flo, do you have any final comments before we sign off today? I just enjoyed the show. It was a pleasure to discuss with you. Happy to see the comment, happy to see the support. What's, uh, what you need to know is like every time you send to us like a, a message on LinkedIn on YouTube and things like that, we just have a channel on Slack where we share the love and we just uh, appreciate it a lot. Uh, we don't take yet the time to answer to all of you, but uh, at DigiDub, we really appreciate it and uh, it gives us a power to, the, to all the team. Amazing. Thank you. Last two items. One. We just shared a TikTok link from DigiDot. Uh, we forgot to talk about this. DigiDot made a great <laughs> TikTok. Uh, absolutely cool. Got to click on that link. Check it out. Second one, Reloom Design League. Later today, 6 p.m., we have Sergey from FinSuite competing in the finals. At 6 p.m. Eastern, go to Reloom's YouTube channel for that. It is now three and a half minutes past the hour, so we are over time, and we are signing off for today. Thank you, Flo. Thank you for the community. And we will be here tomorrow and next week. See you soon. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.